There we are. So uh, yeah, I want to give an update and for some of our new members, uh, a few slides first about who we are. Um, and, you know, you found this link on your here because you purposefully, I think, uh, got here. So, um, but just to give a background about who CASDA is today. So our vision at CASDA is really about a better quality of life for autistic Canadians. And as a constructive policy generator, CASDA aims to identify emerging policy gaps and create systems change by guiding the development and implementation of a national autism strategy. A successful national autism strategy will accomplish this vision as a means to align policy, programs, and services with the vision that we have. So before I get into uh, what's, what's ahead, we wanna talk about where we came from. It's really important to understand the legacy and, and the work that CASA has done uh, for us to know where we're going. So you're in review. Take the next 10 minutes or so uh, to walk through some of the highlights, um, obviously not doing justice to many of the projects and uh, a lot of the work of, of staff and, and partners and members uh, who are on this call that have uh, created this incredible uh, 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 piece of work. So our strategic plan uh, was to uh, had three pillars. First, collective voice, bringing people, organizations, and ideas together. Secondly, federal advocacy, engaging at the federal level with policymakers on issues that impact autistic individuals. And thirdly, operational excellence, making sure we have a resource management system that supports our mission and building that up. So I'm gonna start off with some federal advocacy uh, pieces. So everybody here uh, is probably familiar with the blueprint, which was released in 2019 before the election. Uh, we moved, we looked at these as areas of federal jurisdiction, uh, which we could act, we can uh, bring to the government, the federal government, to action a national autism strategy. We followed that up last year, uh, last March, with the roadmap to a national strategy. Uh, this was uh, published the week before COVID came to Canada. So uh, some of these deadlines are a little shifted, but it still provides a robust, strong roadmap uh, that will inform how we continue to move forward and what you can expect uh, with some of the timelines on the top row shifted a bit. And these documents are all available on our website. Uh, and from there, we worked with Kids Brain Health Network uh, to do some research, uh, do some policy scoping analyses of international perspectives about uh, autism strategy and disability strategies, what that looked like around the world to have some comparative policies. And uh, coming to today through this partnership, uh, we had developed a policy compendium. And these compendium themes align with the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences work on the uh, consultation for the national strategy. And today we've created this compendium tool on our website to make conversations around policy more accessible and more user friendly. So for each of these themes, we have links to the various policy briefs that were developed by the policy fellows last year, summarizing recommendations that stakeholders from across the country, many of you who are involved uh, in these groups, uh, to, into bite-sized social media posts, um, into policy briefs, into uh, sort of highlights and uh, key summaries that will help us engage with the community and with government partners. Next, collective voice. So uh, as Debbie already mentioned, we started off with some webinars as we had to quickly pivot, pivot to an online format. Uh, these webinars are really to inform, to advocate, um, and more importantly, to equip and empower others to do so. So here's just some of the snapshots of some of the ones we did during the year um, at the U United Nations Convention of the Rights of People with Disabilities uh, with the uh, Disability and Work Conference, uh, usually held in Ottawa, with Ryerson University, um, with uh, Canada's, uh, sorry, Children's Healthcare Canada, a podcast, at the Kids Brain Health Virtual Conference, um, with the United Nations Department, once again. And we also held the uh, Leadership Summit, which we knew we had about, we had 260 participants uh, come across Canada and internationally, actually, uh, that participated in the summit last year. And this is just a program from the summit last year, and I'll talk about this year and what we're planning. And last, we also launched a podcast series in partnership with Spiros Careers Canada. Uh, right now, we're averaging about two uh, episodes per month, and there's seven episodes to date. And we're uh, planning to continue uh, with a lot of interest to highlight the work of CASDA and also those who work with us. In operational excellence, so I'm going to walk through some of the projects that we have uh, uh, done at CASDA ourselves. 
So first, uh, in partnership with Ready, Willing, and Able, uh, looking at autism and employment, we have an autism employment policy scan looking at the different policies around getting employment and sustaining employment uh, supports uh, across the country in each of the regions, uh, provinces, and territories. There was an employment recovery program that was put in place after uh, COVID-19 hit, uh, which led into the inclusive workplace, which we just launched as a hub of resources um, for employers, for community organizations, and for employees. And also the Autistic Voices Project to gain, gather the stories of uh, autistic job seekers or ones who are in jobs and how COVID has affected them. So on the uh, policy scan, uh, there will be the deliverables this coming year, a report for all CASDA members, and also a resource uh, for these three groups, which I just mentioned earlier. Uh, we also last year had uh, the pan-cancer pandemic uh, uh, survey about needs during, uh, um, during COVID. We put this out, uh, mobilized it with Austin Speaks Canada and McArt uh, immediately following uh, the COVID outbreak, even before CERB was put together. So we're very proud of this work that we've done with our members. We had over uh, 800 participants uh, uh, that took part in this and over a quarter of them were autistic Canadians themselves. And uh, the, the survey and, and the, the infographic and the brief can be found on the website and on Autism Speaks Canada's website as well. Uh, last, uh, not lastly, there's still a few more to go, um, but with the Israeli Foundation, uh, they have funded a new work we are doing to create, uh, build, have a building block for an autism data network. And this is to create a foundation for comprehensive integrated data network in Canada. Uh, in collaboration with our partners, we're not doing this ourselves, um, but we are here to be the hub and build that network, uh, making sure we're all coordinated and looking at data the same way in regards to autism across the country, both at the administrative data level and at the clinical level. And I'm um, proud to say that we have uh, Dr. Deepa Singhal uh, joining us uh, to do this work. Uh, she's a professor based at the University of Manitoba. The project objectives in a little bit of detail, and we're going to hear a little more from our guest speaker uh, on this, um, but to bring together data scientists, stakeholders of different sorts or from across the country, set the foundation for that data network, and support the PARC research program, which you'll hear about in a little bit. Uh, we also had an autism research framework program uh, project, which was to uh, bring stakeholders together to have an actionable vision for how autism research um, could be conducted in Canada. In Canada, we do have uh, an excellent uh, amount of autism research that's known internationally, and we should be proud of that. But there are always ways to improve, and um, we've started to identify some of these barriers, identify some of these gaps, and see how we can improve our, our system further. Um, and here is the Canadian Journal of Autism Equity. Many of you have heard of it. We were very busy last week to do this. We're proud to say uh, we have uh, uh, almost a dozen now, but uh, autistic editors who are leading this. And this journal is uh, launched. It's going to be published twice a year. Uh, our first uh, issue was in April, so just last week, and then next one in October coming up. Here's this first issue. Um, and the goal of this, or what this is, it's an open access community journal to focus critically on engaging a variety of equity discussions in the autism community and in public policy. Yeah, and as mentioned, this first journal featured works from the editorial board. Um, so I invite you to take a read on our website or at cj.ca, I believe, or .com. Megan can put it in the chat to correct me. and looking forward. So that's a, a really quick whirlwind of what we've been doing in this past year. Uh, it seems like yesterday, um, you know, when, when all this started and look how much we've accomplished. Uh, looking forward, I, I, you know, I'm gonna kind of fly through some of the projects going forward, again, not doing justice to a lot of them, but two principles that we're gonna be thinking about um, and looking forward in this next year. As we become a convener, as we become the, the, the place where collective impact, uh, mobilizing collective impact, two principles. So the first one here is equity seeking. Um, as we know in history, as we know in society, when initiatives like this have a bit of, are mobilized and have a bit of momentum, it's important to, uh, I'd call it a swim upstream to make sure that we have an uh, equity seeking uh, emphases in all our projects and, and how we choose to do our work. And secondly, to make sure we're data driven. So uh, similarly, we wanna make sure that you know, in today's world with the 
with the onset of social media, with the onset of uh, different sources of news to make sure that we are focused on the data, that uh, reality isn't misconstrued and policies and practices aren't informed by uh, things that aren't true. So um, these two principles will really drive how CASDA will move forward. So equity seeking and data driven. So here's some of the projects. Um, so Autism Data Network. So that has just started. Um, Deepa has just joined us. So we will be uh, launching that. It's a two-year project there. Uh, the CASDA KBHN Policy Fellowship. So last year was a success with the five working groups we did with Kid, Kids Brain Health Network. Um, we have six, seven fellows joining us this year. And uh, we will be holding, uh, they will be doing some continued work on developing policy uh, with you, with stakeholders from across the country on autism policy. Um, we will be doing some accessibility work, a visual work from home guide um, for autistic Canadians and employers and other stakeholders. And you know, because virtual work is with us to stay, what are the barriers in doing so? And we, we have a, a collaboration with Microsoft that's continuing to grow uh, for that. Autistic Voices 2, so we had Autistic Voices 1, which was to, just to remind you um, to hear the stories of Autistic Canadians uh, after COVID, what's gone on in terms of their employment. Um, we realized, um, bring this equity seeking idea along that we a lot of underrepresented uh, populations of Canada uh, weren't part of those stories. So we're gonna actively look and, and try to raise their narratives and their stories as well. Uh, Summit 2021. Uh, is going to occur. We're uh, live and well uh, with our summit committee and moving forward October 6th and 7th of this year is the date. So pin that to your calendar. Uh, we will be virtual. Uh, maybe we're, we're planning to host some watch parties for uh, local community gatherings or um, local gatherings as public health guidelines uh, allow us, but we will have a virtual platform that will be the backbone of it all. And lastly, uh, this year, uh, the United Nations uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities uh, is having their civil society reports uh, due. So we will be part of that process, working with many of the other uh, disability organizations. We are, uh, we are partly in, in leadership of a pan-disability leadership coalition uh, that we're trying to uh, form uh, with the minister and, and work with these other organizations. So those were some of the highlights. Uh, you can look forward to this summer. We're going to start some community roundtables. This is related to the work with Kids Brain Health, uh, where we will do some stakeholder mapping uh, to build on the policy compendium that was made last year. And we're looking for your involvement, your expertise uh, in doing so. And this is just to test your eyes, really. Um, but um, my point of putting the slide in, it's our org chart. Um, last year, there were two dots on here, really, um, if we even had one. Uh, now, just to reflect that, CASDA, we are growing um, in terms of us being the backbone of all that you are doing uh, and bringing, drawing people in and coordinating. So uh, we are a growing organization, and I'm proud to say um, and, and thankful for uh, the many staff and, and uh, volunteers that have been along in this process. And uh, we're looking forward to further work. So in the development of autism related policies and processes, what are we now? We are really the convener. We wanna be that place where the uh, autism community comes together. We are the incubator of these innovative ideas, including the autism data network. And how do we do this? We do so by working together to foster consensus to pilot innovation and bring together emerging practices from you, our members, to the federal government. So that is our role. That's how we're gonna position ourselves in this coming year as we move alongside with the Canadian Academy's uh, consultation process uh, to make sure it's robust, to make sure that as the national autism strategy is being put to work, that it is something that will last and have impact on the ground to affect the lives um, of the people we care for. <laughs> 